discovering about yourself? And Jason, I'm going to start with you. You're like the first one on my right. Yeah, just, you know, looking at the MRA, following it, reading it, rediscovering stuff within it and how it relates to you, I guess. That's my question. I'll re-ask it. I'm discovering that I am far less disciplined than I thought I was. Just because I'm disciplined in some areas of my life doesn't mean that it translates directly to all areas of my life. And to accomplish the model requires daily consistency and daily discipline. And I'm so far from where I intend to be. Um, I love that. So knowing that and, and discovering that, what changes? What's the first step that you're going to take to turn that around? Well, I've taken it. Uh, I've heard a coach. I don't know if you've heard of her, this Teresa Kennedy lady. She's pretty good. <laughs> Uh, basically what we're doing is we're completely redesigning our business model this year. Uh, Jerrica is taking the role of main agent. I'm going to step into executive assistant for about two or three months. And then we're going to make our first hire. Then I'm going to step back into production. Then we're going to double our business this year. Um, so the, the, the first step is been, this is the first time that I've aggressively Get your coach. tried to wrap my mind around these models and actually apply them. So that's the biggest difference is I'm actually doing it. Nice. Awesome. Thank you for, thank you for sharing, Jason. That was, that was great. Thank you. Um, Mr. Adam, what are you discovering about yourself? Just yeah, Jason, okay. it's like you were on my maps call with me and Teresa yesterday. <laughs> we talked a lot about consistency and how I can improve on that. So I'm discovering that as I'm reading these models, I'm getting excited and I want to do too many things at once. I mean, and, you know, this is, I've been with KW for a while and this is the deepest I've dug into these um, systems and models. So I'm discovering that I have a lot more to, to discover. And as far as improving my business, um, yeah, consistency is key. And the more consistent I'm going to be, the more predictable um, growth and the ultimate outcome of making more money and having a, a deeper life and relationships with other people is, 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 uh, achievable. How are you finding that you've changed your way of thinking also in regards to thinking like a millionaire agent? Setting higher goals for myself, um, you know, seeing what's possible and seeing that it's possible for me. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, Adam. Diane, what are you discovering about yourself? Oh, I have to, good morning, everyone. I have to agree with uh, what's been said about consistency and discipline. You know, this time of year brings about laziness for me. Um, you know, I can make excuses all day long about going out and Christmas shopping or whatever. So, um, yeah, discipline and consistency and making sure I make the calls every day, twice a day. I, I like to do it in the morning as well as late in the afternoon when people are getting off work um, because they don't like to be bothered during the day. At least that's what I have found. Um, I represent the buyers on the team. So um, always following up with those leads. So that's about all I got. What and how have you shifted knowing the, how, what you've discovered, what have you shifted in your daily habits? Just, um, well, I've always felt that I've gotten up in the morning, started my day, showered, prepared as if I was walking into an office um, since we are working from home and have been for quite some time now. I just prepare myself mentally and uh, sit down in my 
computer and 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 make it work and start making the phone calls um making sure that i allot that specific amount of time in the morning and late afternoon to make those calls nice thank you for sharing okay miss Anne marie what are you discovering about yourself um i have a really hard time letting go <laughs> i have to follow through with every little thing and I spend hours every day dealing with all kinds of the issues in between the contract and the closing and letting um, being involved with some leverage and letting somebody else actually <laughs> take over some of the technology that I'm not super proficient at or you know, going out to the houses and setting up the COs and things like that that I'm sure somebody else could do. I, I have control issues <laughs> that holds me back. So that was the one thing and the other is um, you know, just looking at, you know, looking at my budget, you know, I um, just need to be a little clearer about what's going into what accounts. That's kind of what I am trying to focus on, like make the money for real estate and spend the money, invest the money for the return. It's not spending it, it's investing it. So, um, awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, I didn't mean to so what changes do you feel since you started the book club and, you know, I've pushed you guys and challenged you to really look in at what myths you had and how you've, you know, are going to change it if you haven't. And so when you think about that, how can you relate to those myths now? Or can you not? Was this an open question? No, it's for Anne Marie. Oh. She's, I think she's trying to find it. <laughs> one is, one is, oh, there's, you can't, you know, um, everybody loves me. They'll work with me. And another one is, oh, that can't be done in my market. Or, you know, there's, and that's, those are all limiting beliefs. Yeah. And um, so how, how have you felt a difference? Um, I think this is a book club is just, you know, more awareness of the three things, the lead listings and leverage, you know? And I'm uh, working, you know, with the coach and working with, you know, this group here is just helping me to get some more clarity. They're not just words, they're actions and uh, they're rewarding. You know, I, that, I think that's the other thing too, is that they can be very rewarding when I pay attention. But the myth that um, affects me with, you know, the control issues is it's too risky, I'll lose money. That's the, that's the, that's the one that caught me up. So trying to change that, that it's not too risky, but it's an advantage. Awesome. Thank you for sharing, Anne Marie. Okay. May. Good morning. Sorry. Morning. That's okay. So I'm having technical difficulties this morning. Oh no. Um, yeah. So um, are you ready to, to answer or do you want me to wait until you're no, I, I can give you a um, quick answer. I didn't hear what the question was, okay. though. So the question is, what are you discovering about yourself? Oh, I am discovering I need more consistency. I need to be more consistent. I need to take better care of all of that. Um, I've been playing red light, green light with my finances. and. Um, <laughs> and I don't know, I'm just um, finding different ways to be um, I'm finding I need to rely on my calendar more. And um, that's going to help me tremendously. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Um, what um, so in your self-discovering to relying on your calendar more in the past, when you have relied on it, how were things differently with 
your, not just your business, but keeping everything organized? Um, I find that like, well, for example, yesterday, there was an appointment I had that was not calendared. And because it was not calendared, I, um, I totally spaced on it. And so I was rushing around and I didn't get everything done. I would much rather have um, had that on my calendar, not spaced it, and been able to not rush around and get and get everything done. So now I have to adjust today's um, calendaring um, to fit in what I was planning to do yesterday. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And so one thing that I would really, I'd like to challenge you on is going back and looking at page 116 and 117, the way, you know, the nine ways that a millionaire agent thinks. Okay. Okay. And really getting familiar with that again. Thank you okay. for sharing me. Thanks. Um, okay. Miss Beth, what are you discovering about yourself? You're muted, my friend. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, I am one of the things, it's kind of a rediscovery that I am a control freak. <laughs> um, I didn't, I thought I'd gotten beyond that, but realized I've been relying on myself completely for my business. And with um, my husband coming into the business, realizing, okay, I need to let go for for a lot of reasons. One, that piece with bringing other people in, bringing an assistant in and, um, and I'm not going to grow if I don't let go. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, so that's been my, my biggest thing, um, in the last couple of months between working on systems for bringing an assistant in and, um, and bringing my husband coming on into the business. So, so control. And then the other piece is belief. Um, I heard something yesterday that really hit me. It's like, you can set a goal and, and have this goal for, you know, say, say your belief around, you know, what I'm, I'm intending to earn in the next year. But if deep down, I don't think I'm going to earn beyond a certain point, then I won't. And so that is a piece that I'm really working on. <laughs> Wow. That's really yeah. powerful. Cause I, yeah. when it, it really hit me. Cause then I looked back and I was like, Oh my gosh. And, and this year I have broke a ceiling <laughs> for the first time in a long time, which feels great. And, and you get a little taste of that and you're like, okay, now I want more. <laughs> so I need to, I need to get my mindset around that. That's awesome. Thanks Beth. Yeah. And it's think possibilities, right? Think yeah. big. Mm-hmm. Big goals. I think big and believe you can <laughs> do 100%. big. Yeah. You know, we were, we're all designed for greatness and destined mm -hmm. for greatness. Mm -hmm. So what, um, how, was the, especially knowing like getting up control and, and having, you know, um, your, you know, Phil joined the team and how have you, how do you feel that that has helped you personally grow? Like, what has that done for you? Um, one, it made me realize sometimes I doubt myself and it's made me realize, no, you know what you're doing. <laughs> You've got this, you've been doing this. Um, and you, and, and I can do a lot more. Um, and that I have that experience to get these systems in place and help others grow and achieve their dreams through it too. Nice. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Allison, what are you discovering about yourself? Yeah. Hi. Um, what I'm discovering about myself is I really need to pay attention to my uh, profit and loss statement and um i was getting frustrated because i had something that was very um vague so i hired someone to do the profit and loss statement in more detail so i can really hone in on where am i spending my money and where am i getting 
the most bang for my buck. This is the first time I've ever really, really analyzed it. Um, also, I discovered about myself, I, I get so excited about everything, I schedule too many things at once. So I need to learn to break it down, relax, just get it done, you know, one or two things extra as you as I grow, you know, per day. I'm trying new things, but I just want to get it all done. And I can't, I just got to take it one or two at a time each day just to get it done. I'm trying to do more technology and more reach outs to my steer. I discovered my steer is a big part of my business. So I really need to hone in on those guys. Awesome. And so knowing that your sphere is a really big part of your, your business. So for example, and Jason, I'm going to um, share if you don't mind, because the biggest part of y'all's, you know, when looking at your business, allied resources, right? And so when you, when you sat and you looked at your business plan and you discovered, Allison, that you know, a lot of your business came from sphere of influence. And I can share that like most of you guys, when you looked at your business plan, a lot of it was sphere of influence mm -hmm. or allied resources. I mean, we just did the lead generating model where there's a great model for creating that referral program for your allied resources. Think of what it could also do putting your sphere in, into that type of uh, program as well. What possibilities do you see, Allison, for your business next, next year, knowing that you can incorporate and put into place that program for not just your allied resources, but your sphere? Well, when you say program, I don't, I don't understand what you mean by program into the or action plan, right? Action so plan. you're creating an action plan that's that's similar to the referral program they call it um, for your allied resources. You can use that for your sphere as well. So, for example, it's the client appreciation events that we talk oh, about. How okay. you keep in touch. So, what do you see your business doing next year, knowing that you've been able to hone in on that? Yeah, I see myself doing more interaction with. I do that quarterly instead of just randomly, you know, send them a, sending them a card or calling them. Um, also, I, I know quite a few small businesses and um, trying to get more exposure for them and myself. So, so a dovetail. Uh, I like, you know, I like what you suggested that hey, the first 10 that likes this gets a free latte or something like that, yeah. you know, just, they seem to be very receptive to this idea of, of you know, giving them a, a spotlight uh, on my page. So that seems to help. Awesome. Thank you, Allison. Okay, Miss mm -hmm. Esther. Yes, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. What are you discovering about yourself? Yeah, so um, a lot. <laughs> um, but I think the, uh, the one thing that just keeps on really coming to the forefront is um, consistency, but also weekly checking in with my goals and um, my not only my calendar, daily check-in, but mainly just checking in more often with my goals and, um, and making sure that I'm on track. Cause I, I tend to set goals. I've realized I've, I've set goals and then maybe I'll check in once a quarter and that's not enough for me. Um, I realize that I need to um, realign things as they um, more often because our market here in the San Francisco Bay area it changes a lot and it's a micro market. So um, there, there, there are different parts of our county um, and surrounding cities that um, not only the inventory changes and, and, and so on, but, but just prices can just shoot up very quickly. 
and or things could sit on the market unexpectedly. So um, not only and then that, of course, and then, you know, the, the daily really adjusting and, and checking the weekly checking in is just to really make sure that I'm going in that direction and that I've set my goals to go. Um, and then a big one, too, that I, I heard was just believing in myself that I can do it. Um, and um, moving moving forward, making sure that I'm always having forward movement, um, kind of like encouraging myself. So um, yeah, so those those are the things that come to mind. Awesome, thank you, thank you for sharing. Um, so out of everything, okay, so you've you know not just the things you've discovered about yourself. I love that you brought up the fact that your goals change because I think we can all agree that our goals change. And so being able to check in with yourself, whether it's every month or every quarter, are you, are, are these goals still important to you? I have a lot of clients that they say, I don't even know what my why is anymore. Well, that's because we change. And so <clears throat> that's really important to have that consciously awareness about your goals changing. So thank you for sharing. Jyoti, um, what about you? What are you discovering about yourself? So, um, so far, um, mine is not like the business business in the sense like there's just me. And, uh, you know, recently I added one more person to my team. So I, I haven't really thought of myself as a business. It's been more like an income. Um, and uh, so the need to now plan ahead as I'm planning for next year and the possibility of adding an assistant and so on. So the need to plan ahead and the need to think of myself as a business and, uh, you know, um, and, and, and plan for the expenses uh, and go about it in a planned way. Um, I've never been much of a budget person. I mean, uh, conceptually, I understand the strong points of it. Um, I've never been a big spender, so it's never been an issue. But if I'm really to grow as a business and increase my income to where I want it to be, uh, you know, the need. Think. Uh, and the way I feel about budgets is, is really what hits me the most about this whole thing. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. And so with that, and hi, Siobhan, I'm glad that you're, you're joining us. Um, to respect everyone's time, we're going to get right into the budget model. Um, but really fast, I'd love to hear really quick from you, Siobhan, what is it, if you could just take like a minute to share what it is that you have discovered about yourself since starting the book club, going back into MREA and just everything, this journey, what have you discovered? I think it's interesting. When I started, I always looked at really big teams and what they did and really building my foundation and figuring out how to get bigger when I was prepared to get bigger. And I think going back through this, obviously it's like, oh, this is why they did this, right? I read the book when I first got in, I haven't really read it since. And then now to go back, the things that I have been doing, now I know why I'm doing them and maybe, and just how to do them better, how they should be done correctly. So that's what I've been learning. Awesome. Thank you. So, okay. So let's get, dig into it. Who all finished their budget? Okay. Well, I appreciate you all being honest. So who did read this chapter? Awesome. Okay, cool. So I'm going to challenge each of you guys to complete your budget model and I want it in my inbox by Sunday, 5 p.m. Okay. I would not be doing you guys justice 
if I didn't hold you accountable, you've come this far. And so even if you, you know, no, there's not any even F. 5 p.m. Sunday in my inbox, okay? So lead with revenue. <clears throat> Such a powerful, you know, thought, way of thinking. So Gary says that the key to budgeting and spending, and it's not even Gary, it'd be anybody, Warren Buffett would tell us this, is to subscribe to one critical discipline. You lead with revenue, not expenses. And so why do you think that is? Who can answer that question? Why do you think you lead with your revenue and not expenses? I'll, 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 I'll try that one. Yeah, awesome, please. Um, you know, it's hard to spend money if you don't have it. And if you don't have plans for how to get it, then it's, it's not gonna work very well. I know here in Colorado, there is a, another um, um, company that does our, that has contracts and a majority of the agents here use that that contract software instead of using what um, Gary's provided us with. And so when I'm dealing with a newer agent, one of the things I like to share with them is don't buy that other software until you absolutely need to. And if you can have a deal under your belt before you buy it, all the better. I mean, it, it's just, it's plain economics. You got to have it before you can spend it. Yeah, exactly. Because, okay, so let's say, for example, you are, you keep your expenses when, you know, at a model that you are closing, you know, and having 1.6 million in GCI. And let's say that you get God forbid, really sick, or you take time off or whatever, and you're not bringing in that revenue anymore, but you keep your budget and your expenses at that. You're not going to be able to survive because you're spending more than what you're making. So when you look at what your revenue is, that's why it's so important. And moving forward next year, every month, I want your P and L period. I know I'm transformational. I know it's about mindset. Yet at the same time, we got to start thinking like business owners, even though we do a lot of transformational. Yes, Mr. Jason. Oh, I'm moving up, mister. Um, at our office, we have something monthly called the Hero Happy Hour. And that's where we bring in alcohol and wine and cheese. And then we bring in a big dog to come talk to us. Most recently, we had a Mo come talk to us. It was real inspirational. Um, one consistent thing that I've noticed is all of these top teams, one of the things they always talk about is every year when they sit down and do their uh, business plan, they're amazed at how much they were spending on leads, but not getting any results. And in the heat of the action, it sounds great. They'll go in, they'll sign the contract, start spending the money. And then a year later, they look at it and they've only gotten three deals from it. Uh, and it just wasn't worth the spend. And most of their deals are coming from their sphere, their database. Um, and so what I'm learning from the big producers is that the, the external spend isn't necessary until you've run out of sphere to sell to. And that causes uh, higher closing metrics uh, on their appointments and things like that. So it it just seems real synergistic to, to lead with revenue, even though I'm always trying to talk my wife into some new lead source. She talks me out of it every time for that exact reason. Awesome. Love it. Love it. Yeah, 100%. So I want everyone's mindset to shift and listen to me. I'm like, I want, no, it's not about me. It's about you guys. Yeah, you should want your mindset 
to shift and to think with revenue. And I'm just as guilty. I mean, you know, yet my mindset has definitely shifted of what am I bringing in? What can I budget? What can I afford? You know, what can I do? What can I not? Red light, green light. I heard someone talking about the red light, green light that they, you know, that they're doing and realizing. Was that you, May? Okay. So I'd love yeah, to hear that from me. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to hear Sorry. from one of you guys, you know, uh, who, who has experienced and used this philosophy or this way of thinking in, in their business. Right now I'm using it with some of the, even some of the models that KW's got out there. The um, role play rat practice things, the RPR that they're doing. I signed up for that and I haven't been on a call in two months. So why am I paying for something I haven't been able to be on a call for? It's that time they're doing it right now. They just finished it. But I, A, I'm on this call and B, I'm on the road. I can't be sitting there looking at a, a sheet of paper. So I had to sit, make the decision to remove that, even though it's something I really need to do. I did need to find another way to do it. And then um, there, the tech enabled agent, I haven't been on that call in probably, well, at least all of 2021. So why am I paying for that? Again, a red light, green light, um, item that I can add back into my budget for something else. Absolutely. Here's, here's how, and I highlighted this. Um, he wrote, he, he, um, writes or he meaning Gary. So red light, green light. So if you begin with the process by leading with revenue and you're always investing your money investing money, your sales business has already generated, then your job is to hold that investment accountable. Now, at some point, the dreaded cost creep will probably occur. However, you can greatly minimize your risks by following sound business practices like leading with revenue and red light, green light. So when your costs just creep up with no corresponding increase in results, meaning you're not seeing any return on investment, that is when you really have risk. So we call that good money chasing bad business practices. So then you just pull out your stop sign and you go, stop, you're not going to do that anymore. So it's really about the way that you think about things. Okay, guys. And then number three is sticking to the budget, which all of you now are going to have to me and Diane, our budget, I, I do every month with a, uh, the CPA. So ours is done. Um, but the budget that you guys are going to have in my inbox by five o'clock Sunday. Because if I don't hold you accountable to that, then everything we're doing is for nothing. And you guys are better than that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what's going through your minds whenever I say that to y'all? Well, with me, um, my budget, I, I'm going through this for the third time because I, I uh, as I mentioned earlier, I, I did it very loosely. Now I'm going through it again in detail. <laughs> So I'm like, okay, I'm really going to hone, hone, hone in on what and where am I spending on what, where, and, and who. Um, so this is, I, I fought it at first, but now I know I have to face it. Yeah, because I respect you, right? And right here, it is written in plain English. Budgets are to be respected. I respect you all and care about you enough to hold you accountable and say that it's got to be in my inbox by Sunday, 5 p.m., or this is all for nothing. It's like, 
if you were a, hold on one second, Amory, um, if you were preparing for the Olympics, would you put 50% of yourself in or would you put 100% of yourself in to prepare? So it's the same for this. Are you giving, are you just putting 50% of yourself into this book club? Or are you going to put 100% of yourself into it? Anne Marie? What I'm thinking is one, is there a particular form that you want us to send in? Is it personal expense form and business expense form that um, Arian sent us? That's number one. And two is I keep um, my budget on my phone. I have an every dollar account. Every dollar I have goes into that account. And it's I budget every month what my income is and my expenses. It's a free app. I've been using it for years. So I know where my money goes. Um, but I don't know how you want the form. And um, those are my questions. Cool. What chapter is that? And Marie? What, page 157. Page 157 in the MRA, that is how it should be turned in. Okay. Thank you. So we can see what percent you're spending. Okay. okay. Thank you. You got it. Thank you for asking. So with that, my fine fellow rock star agent clients, is there anybody who has any last minute thoughts that they want to share? No. Um, so I can I can quickly chime in. Um, yeah. So thank you so much for holding us accountable because that's that's for me it's very helpful to to know somebody's waiting for something, <laughs> and so I I appreciate that and um, and it's a great model to get into a habit of following. So thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you for for you know appreciating that and being open. So our next book club, and again, we're breaking this down little by little because I really want you guys to, to soak it all in and, and really implement what we talk about. We're going to go over, so there's the, um, the organizational model. And this is a huge key. Oh, sorry, Emory, your hands up. Yes. Oh, okay. There you go, thank you. So this is this is a really important piece in everyone's business. This is when we talk about leverage, we talk about giving up control, we talk about not having enough time to you know to accomplish everything we want. So I really want to make sure that we really dig into this and we're going to be doing some mindset work on our next call with this. So everyone, we're going to start from page 158 to 185. We're going to look at, um, you know, the uh, organizational model. Okay. And what we're going to do is we are going to start, like I said, we're going to start with some mindset. We're going to talk about this and then I'm going to probably walk you all through, um, um, you know, have you guys close your eyes and do all that fun stuff that I love to do with you guys to help shift your mindset around that. Cool. Well, thank you guys. It, um, our call will be next week. Arian will get that sent out. And I really appreciate you guys being open, vulnerable, sharing, allowing me to push you and hold you accountable. Teresa, I have a question. Yes. So um, it looks like that 185 goes into a, like a revisit of the economic model. Um, 185, um, are you, what? My, I might be in an older version of the book, but it looks like for me that the end of the organization model ends at 172. Where, where we're going. Okay. I see what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. Sorry. I've way skipped ahead. Um, 
you're right. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Where is it? I think it's 174. 174, 174. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 174. Sorry about that. I did. I I I I got a little excited. So 158 to 174. Okay. Thank you, Adam. Yeah, and I just wanted to say that budgets are fun. <laughs> awesome. Love yeah. that. I, I yeah, budgets are fun. That's so funny. Did you ever want to know someone when something I can't give you guys this piece of advice, but like if you watch someone or your kids and you're asking them and you're like, did you, did you, did you do that? Did you do what I asked you not to do? They go, no, I didn't. What do you think they're telling you? <laughs> yes, they did. Their unconscious mind is going, no, you're not lying to your parents. Anyway. Um, okay, guys, thank you so much. I am grateful for all of you guys. And I look forward to our meeting next week. And I'll be on the lookout for your, and Arian is going to send me, just so I remember everyone's name, you know, everyone that was on this call. And so I'm sure knowing Arian, she will probably send you guys a reminder to have your budget in my inbox by Sunday, 5 p.m. Cool. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you.